Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be discussing three different techniques you can utilize to run large models on your system. So I've got here, this is a MacBook Pro and it's a, it's a big beefy one. It's 128 gigabytes RAM. So I've got plenty of memory, except I don't have enough for the super large models, the Kimi K2s, the Deep Seeks, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be sharing the techniques that I use to run these large models on systems with a lot less memory than what I've got here. So the first technique we're gonna jump in is called memory offloading or really model streaming. So I'm gonna demonstrate it, how it works, the slowdowns you get from it, because the way it works is instead of running the models in memory using 100% of it, we're actually gonna be streaming the model directly from storage over and over again. So every single token made needs to do that streaming. So let's go ahead with some real examples and you can see how it feels. So first up I've got, this is Llama 3.2 1B. It's a very, very tiny model. I'm gonna say write a story. And this guy here, once it loads up, Boom, lots of tokens a second. We're getting 360 tokens a second. That's with me running OBS to record the screen. So when I do enable model streaming, if I stream just a little bit, 60% of it, it's still gonna run fast. It is less, so we've cut the speed in half from 360 to 160, and that's just by boosting it by 6% running off storage. If I make it 50%, let's just say more, and it's still running at a reasonable 90 tokens a second. Now, the reason why this guy runs really, really fast is because it's just a 1 billion parameter model. And the SSD on the Max, they run around 7 gigabytes a second. So we can get it in, in and out of memory 7 times at 100%. So that's why we're still getting a massive 90 tokens a second. So I'm going to jump up to the 3 billion parameter model. And I'm keeping the offloading. It's still at 50%. And as you see, that one is also running fast 40 tokens a second. Now, where we're going to notice slowdowns as we get bigger. So I'm going to jump in the mist draw over here. And at full speed, we get around 30 tokens a second. However, if I start to stream the model from SSD, it's starting to slow down 25%, 50%. Look at that. It's slowing down a lot. You can see this word by word, 100% of it. So if we're just streaming it from the SSD, every single token, it's still pretty good. So if you did have a really low device in memory computer, it's not about the, the actual processing speed anymore. It's all about the hard drive speed, how fast you can get the model into memory. And I'm going to switch over to Llama 3.3, 70 billion at six bit quantization. So let's load that one up. And even loading it takes a good few seconds there. It's a lot of gigabytes loaded there. This one's around. 30 gigabytes. So we're going to be at hundred <laughs> percent memory offloading. It's going to be doing that every single token. So let's just get a baseline of the speed, write a story. So this guy here is actually running slow and it's not because of uh, any offloading. It's purely because I'm actually running OBS on this computer. Previously, when I did my videos, I was actually screen recording for another computer. So it didn't actually slow down. So here maybe offloading, it might speed up. I'm going to offload 10% of it. And we can see we're not really noticing any slowdowns here. So the computer itself is auto already fighting with the memory. You can see the operating system is trying to chunk out the memory here and there. But I've got it to 20% offloading and it's gone from three tokens a second to two tokens a second. So not that much of a difference. So I've switched it down now to 50% memory offloading. And we're still going at one and a half tokens a second. But if you look at the um, SSD, we can see that we're reading at 1.2 gigabytes a second read speed. Now this is a lot slowed down because typically it goes around seven gigabytes a second read speed. And it's only doing this because I'm actually fighting with OBS because we're doing a screen recording. But the good thing that you notice here is that the red part, that's to do with the writes. It's writing zero kilobytes to disk. Now one of the fatigue points with SSDs are writing. So all manufacturers that have a total byte written as part of their warranty in which they warranty that the device will be able to be written to a certain amount of times to the SSD because that's what causes the wearing out. Whereas reading, there's not really any um, information or warranty limitations to the amount of reads you can do with the write because it tends to be non-destructive. It's the writing that's destructive and the reading that's non-destructive. So if you are offloading large, large models, then um, yeah, it should still, it's going to run slow. We're going to be talking about tokens per minute now, but um, it's not going to, it's not going to destroy your SSD like typical memory offloading solutions. Typically 
other implementations of memory offloading, what they do is they offload the, the SSD as extra RAM. So they're kind of like ex expanding the RAM and using the SSD as VRAM. So they load the model into memory and they offload it into storage again, into that circular pattern. This implementation of it using Inferencer app, it's just doing purely a read-based implementation. So the SSD, look at that, still in the red and um, zero kilobyte second writing. So speed-wise, we've got 1.3 tokens a second. That's with the 70 billion parameter model. Now, I've never actually tried this with screen recording before. So let's just see what happens. I'm going to switch over to Quen 230 billion parameter model. This is a 200 gigabyte model. <laughs> it can't run on my system. So I'm just going to see what happens at 50%. Now in the, the latest version that I'm working on here, I'm putting in extra guardrails around this memory offloading situation. So if you do pick a low number and uh, your system will crash potentially because you're asking the system to accept a massive model into memory and the operating system, the operating system is not going to know what to do with that. So I'm putting in extra guardrails where even if you pick a low number, so to say 10%, but you don't have enough memory, it's going to beef it up back to 50%, but that's going to be in the next version that's out, not this version now, but you can get a, an idea of the performance. So my recommendation is be very conservative in your memory offloading if you do pick. So if you ha only have 32 gigabytes RAM, use 24, use 20, use lower, be conservative because it could potentially crash your system. But if you have any files open, you might not save it. So you might lose some documents, that kind of stuff. So just be careful. So look at this right there at 50% model memory streaming. So it says it's using 80 gigabytes of RAM. We're getting two tokens already. So that's 0.14 tokens a second times that 60. So it's going to be eight tokens a minute. And this this model doesn't actually fit into memory. I've got the Q6 version of the model and it's running. So the good thing about this is if you're wanting to find out what maybe an unquantized version of the model, you know, the full 100% version of the model, what it looks like, you can run experiments overnight, get a result, and then you can see how bad your quantized version is. And you can do some extra analysis by checking out the tokens and all that stuff. So for example, here we can see that <laughs> it was writing a story. You didn't know whether it was going to start off as rain or dust straight away there with the token inspection. So that's the, the first method of running these large models. Now the second method, and this one is going to be fun. And this requires getting yourself just a large computer. So we get a massive, super powerful computer and you run that as a server. So for example, here, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to go into the server tab instead, and I'm going to connect to my Mac studio remotely. And I've got the Quinn three coder at Q6 loaded and I'll say, right, need some Python. So you can see it's actually streaming the inference from the server straight up at 2019.7 tokens a second. And I'm just going to log it into that computer to show you exactly what's going on and how to set it up. So this is the server over here and this one is the client. and inside server, I've set up to auto start on my system. And I've enabled SSL encryption. So the messages sent from each other are encrypted. You do have the option of Olama compatibility and open air compatibility and auto stopping, all that kind of stuff and discovery. So allow discovery as well advertises your IP address over the network. So I've enabled allow discovery inside server here. I can see that the server is already selected and all that stuff. If I disable auto discovery, it should disappear from this window. Boom. So it's no longer being advertised on the Bonjour network. Enable it. And as you can see, it's appeared right there. So all you do is you, when you see your server, you connect to it. I'm going to improve the UI in the future, but you want to click auto connect. If you want to always connect every single time you start up, as long as the server is available. So now that it's connected, you choose which model you want to run. So all these models here, they're actually on the server. So you can jump to GLM, for example, and you type in hello, and it's going to go ahead and load the model into memory. 
we've got this tasks tab here and we can see that we're doing a background generation on the server. I've made it so you can't actually see the prompt that you give to the user just for privacy. I guess everyone, even though it's a server and it's probably your server, you know, it's, it's still good to not just see, have visibility. So the server is kind of like a dumb server. It just processes what it can. I guess if you do hack into the memory of the server, you can probably figure things out, but I don't allow it to be viewable by the user. And what you can also do is while this one is loading up, you can start a new window and you can ask it another question. So I'll write a story and we've got our little task operation. We can see we've got two tasks in the process. One is saying hello to GLM and the other one is write a story. And this is on the client. So you have run these prompts. That's why this is available to you on the server. You just see background generation. So the server doesn't know exactly what's going on. The client is the one that has all controls and that's the client is where all the chats are saved. I mean, potentially I could make the server also save the messages, but I've just decoupled that privacy because I like the idea of the client being responsible for the privacy and um, the server being responsible for just the inference. So we can see that we've generated two responses here. This one said, hello, and decided to respond to me. It thought in English, but responded to me in Chinese. That's really interesting. I want to find out why it did that. So it was <laughs> potentially could have replied back with hello, but it chose there. I don't know what that says. So I'm going to make it say hello and see what it does this time around. So I'm rerunning the inference and it should do that as soon as it's finished this generation. And if you want, you can stop the generation at any time. So for example, write a story, I'm going to cancel that and it's going to jump ahead into this one. And look at that, it's responded in English. So that was uh, interesting. So by default in the Q6 version, it was going to respond in Chinese and it actually responded in English when you made it respond in English. That's coming soon to the token inspection stuff. We're going to be able to um, manage the tokens better. And actually, something you can even do today is um, if you go into the token inspector, if you tap on that symbol, you can actually click minus and add it as a token to ignore. So if I ignore that token and replay it, it's actually going to go with a second token and that's going to be the English one. Look at that. It's responded straight with English right there, purely because I've got that now as an ignore token. So I've got all these tokens that I can ignore. I'll just disable that right there. So that is two methods to be able to inference large, super large models on your system. And uh, there's a third one, and that one is going to be distributed computing. So what we have here already, we've got a way to stream the model from storage, and we've got a way to network the computers together so they can work together, client server. So the next step is we're going to be doing distributed inference. So the idea is it's going to be like a relay race. One computer is going to start the inference, then it's going to hand over to the second computer. The whole models are going to be into memory. So it should be a lot faster than SSD inferencing. And uh, we'll see how that goes. One, interest, one interesting thing about this stuff is that even though this is designed for the local networking, the protocols I've used is compatible to be run over the internet. So if you do port forward or allow your ports to be exposed by the public internet, then you can actually connect remotely anywhere in the world. I'll be adding in some IP block lists and all that stuff. If it's required, check out the public roadmap. But yeah, that's three different techniques you can potentially do depending on what time you watch this video. Hopefully I'll have that distributed inferencing coming soon. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.